Hello, good morning all. This is Kumar Pratyush and today we are going to discuss about flame photometry. The topics that we are going to cover in this particular session is the basic concepts and introduction, instrumentation and application. So let's start with introduction. The flame photometry is also called as flame atomic emission spectrometry in which the sample is examined in the form of atoms or we can say that in atomic form. This particular spectrometry is mainly used for qualitative and quantitative determination of metal ions which are being present in the sample or is associated in the sample like sodium, potassium, calcium, lithium etc. The quality qualitative application we can see the change in the color of the flame and the uh, change in color can help us to determine whether the sample contains the particular metal or not the intensity of the color which can be digitalized in the way of numbers can also be used for the quantitative analysis Simultaneously, we can also carry out the quantitative analysis using this particular spectrometry. We can prepare a series of dilutions and then we can count the number of ions that are present in the diluted aliquots. The principle of this particular spectrometry includes a solution of metallic salt is nebulized into a flame. At high temperature, firstly solvent molecule is vaporized leaving the solute particle which is then converted into gaseous state. Upon absorption of the thermal energy, the gaseous molecule is dissociated into neutral atom and its electron reached to the excited state. So what happens is when the sample is been nibbled, passed through the nebulizer the solvent associated in the sample gets evaporated and only the metallic ions which are later on converted into gaseous state is remained. The unstable excited electrons instantaneously lose energy in light form that is in the photons form and return back to the ground state. The measurement of emitted photons is carried out by flame photometry. In this particular slide, we can see the principle being represented in the form of mathematical equation. A common equation is aware to us that is E is equal to H nu where E is represented as energy, H is the Planck's constant and nu can be represented by C upon lambda where C is speed of light and lambda is wavelength of light. In this case, we are aware that the excited state electrons and atoms are getting converted into the ground state by losing some energy. So the E can be represented by change in energy that is E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu. So the final equation for lambda can be lambda is equal to c upon e2 minus e1. The wavelength is characteristic property of every metal element whereas the light intensity is a function of its concentration. So as we saw we can measure both the analytical parameter by this particular spectrometry. The wavelength is characteristic property of every metal element whereas the light intensity is a function of its concentration. Now this is a very broad and self explanatory statement which can illustrate the qualitative as well as the quantitative characteristic of this particular photometry. Earlier we did studied about Qualitative analysis can be measured by the change in color of the flame. 
and the quantitative analysis can be done by the change in intensity of the flame. So the same principle is being illustrated here. As we can see in the table, the sodium element shows the flame color to be yellow in color, potassium, violet, barium, lime green, calcium, orange, lithium, red. So what we do in particular case of practical is we set the flame to be blue and zero at zero count using deionized water which when replaced with the sample containing if we, the sample is containing sodium so the flame color should change from blue to yellow and if the same is with potassium ions so it should change to violet if such type of observation is seen we can say that yes sodium ions or potassium ions or barium or calcium or lithium ions are present in the sample with respect to the color change of the flame that is observed the wavelength of the emission can be illustrated like sodium the wavelength is 589 potassium it is 766 barium it is 554 calcium it is 662 lithium it is 670 so let's uh, as we talked all about the change in flame color so let's understand the flame first the flame can be divided into various regions or zone as preheating zone primary reaction zone or inner zone interconal zone used for flame photometry and secondary reaction zone now if a flame, we observe a flame we should understand that in which area we should focus our observation for particular protocol so with the help of the diagrammatic representation we can see that so with the help of diagrammatic representation we can see the zones clearly designated and the interconal zone that is the zone just above the blue part is the site where we have to focus on in flame photometry there are certain interferences that can occur in flame photometry it may be the spectral interferences some background flame background due to the overlap of the ions or non-ionized ions are present so it can interfere in particular analysis some ionic interferences like when we talk about uh, sodium ions so high temperature flame may cause ionization of some metals like sodium ions now the sodium ions possesses an emission spectrum of its own with frequencies which can be different from that of atomic nature so we can see some interferences while studying the sodium ions through flame photometry some chemical interferences may also lead to the hindrance in the practical and there, those are like cation anion interferences, cation, cation interferences. So basically if our sample is being contaminated, so it will lead to the hindrances and interferences in the complete practical. So, we can see a clear representation of a flame photometer. Here are some zones that can be seen. So first zone is this. This is particularly a burner. Okay, you can see we can the flame can be seen from the upper head. This particular section is a flame view section and actual flame color should be visualized from there only. The digital area where we can see the counts is also present. This is the inlet point which is attached with a pipe, a 
basically a source pipe which will lead to uh, lead the sample to the flame this particular system is attached with your compressor and here we are having a burner lighter okay you are, so we can just light the burner by using the gas cylinder and we can work out we can see the knobs are closed currently more justified explanation as we talked about the interconnel area so we are focusing we can see that in we are focusing on that interconnel area only for the study of flame photometry the sample or the analyte is being nebulized by the mixing chamber towards the burner and in at the burner it, the solvent has been vaporized and the atoms the ions are converted into the gaseous state those are passed through the lenses filters basically these are the role of filters and lenses is to amplify and remove the stray lights and finally detected by the photo emitter tube and amplified in the form of numbers that we can see in the form of count the major components include sample delivery system we have already discussed source source is basically uh, the source for your flame monochromator detector and readout device the sample delivery system basically includes a nebulizer it may be a flame atomizer it may be a nebulizer system which pneumatic uh, nebulizer which are very commonly used the main purpose of this is to break the liquid into the spot those spots will actually contain the atoms or it may be the small droplets okay the source the source is a burner we discussed about the burner burner it may be of two types a pre mix burner or a total consumption burner okay so what happens in this case a pre mix burner ensures that there is certain barriers which can uh, be selective for particular ions but in case of total consumption burner we can see the sample is clearly dipped uh, in with the pipe and all the sample is been directly burned or it uh, directly converted into the gas state the monochromator there are two types of monochromator which can be widely used like prism and gratings a detector which is widely used for this particular photometry is photomultiplier tubes and photoemissive photovoltaic cells the readout device the readout device can give us the color change and the limits and the numbers as per the dilutions are concerned coming to the applications the applications of this flame photometry is wide because we can estimate the sodium potassium ions we are aware that the body in our body there are certain calcium channel exchangers some uh, potassium channels so the concentration of these channels and concentration of these ions in our body can be estimated in the sample of serum urine csf and we can use this particular flame photometry for the same the flame photometry is also useful to determine the alkali and alkaline earth metals like we can see that the calcium and sodium so these two are the very best example which can be uh, discussed in the class of alkali metals or alkali earth metals it can be also used to determine the lead in the petrol because we, currently we are using unleaded petrol right the, because at per, as per the uh, environmental guidelines so lead leaded petrol leads to more air pollution so we are here to use unleaded petrols for in our automobiles but how to detect that lead so flame photometry is one of the best option it can be used to study the equilibrium constant involving ion exchange re resins now when we are talking about ion exchange ion, 
resins so quality of those resins can be tested by this particular technique it can also determine the content of calcium and magnesium in the cement we are seeing many ads which illustrate that our cement is very good and it is a, giving a better binding okay so well, how to test the binding efficacy how to test the quality of the cement so this might be one of the best tool that can be used these are certain references that help me to illustrate all the concepts instrumentation and application of flame photometry thank you